today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys an updated hurricane outlook. We're also going to be talking about why this hurricane season could be a very, very major one. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do the like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social media. For today's count of the day, I want to know what is your earliest memory of weather that you have in your entire life? Let me know and I'll be picking the coolest story, in my opinion, for tomorrow's video. Let's get right into things. So first things we're going to need to take a look at here is our sea surface temperatures here uh, for the Atlantic Ocean. And you can see that we have a lot of yellows and reds going on. We're looking at a lot of warm sea surface temperatures throughout the Atlantic and anywhere where we're going to have Atlantic hurricanes uh, happening. We can see areas to the north of our main development region are very warm. Uh, areas in the main development region, which is basically if you take a look at uh, Dominican Republic, and then you can just take that all the way eastward to Africa. We can't see Africa on the screen, but it's just to the east of the end of the right side of the screen. Uh, basically, that area where there is some blue mixed in. We're near average, but we are forecasted to go above average as far as sea surface temperatures in this region. So we are going to be warming up uh, for that region. And also, take a look at the Gulf and the southeast coast there. Very far above normal sea surface temperatures. Uh, four degrees or more above average Celsius for the sea surface temperatures. They're very far above normal. All right. Now we're about to move on and we're actually going to take a look at the seven day change sea surface temperature. And what that means is it's just going to tell us what the difference is from seven days ago to now uh, as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. Now, I promise we're going to get off kind of the technical subject here. We're going to stop talking about this, and then we're going to move on to my maps that I've made in just a minute. But we have to talk about this as well. These, This is how the temperatures have changed in the past seven days. Notice that main development region, again, from Africa, and then take it westward all the way to about Dominican Republic and Haiti there. And that's our main development region right there. And you can see that they've warmed up the most, actually, indicated by the yellows. We've been warming up for the past seven days quite a bit here. And this could fluctuate. This could go down and then back up again. But overall, we're forecasted to be above average in the sea surface temperature area uh, for that region there. Uh, notice the Gulf has kind of stayed near normal. And then the East Coast has actually cooled down a little bit. But again, expect it to fluctuate just a bit for, you know, until we get to hurricane season. They are going to continue to fluctuate. Now, also take a look here. This is our modeled... Uh, ENSO forecast basically and what they're going to show us is if it's going to be a La Nina or an El Nino. El Nino really hinders hurricane development and La Nina uh, encourages hurricane development and notice they're going to go below that black line most of them. Uh, they're going to he head downward and they're heading further towards a La Nina which is very very interesting to see here from most of the models. Each of those kind of colored lines is a different model. So that's the general consensus there. And then also here's our CFS uh, alone. And this one actually takes us into a pretty moderate La Nina. As you can see, that black dashed line is the future forecast. They're taking it way low, uh, maybe a degree to a degree and a half, maybe even more below average temperatures there in our ENSO region, which would be a moderate La Nina to say the least. We'll talk about that in a minute, but we're about to move on and start talking about our forecast here for the hurricane season. Now we're going to talk about how the La Nina impacts this in just a moment, but I wanted to show you guys our hurricane season sea surface temperature forecast. That's SSTs. Uh, that's what SST stands for, sea surface temperatures. And you can see throughout all of these yellow areas in the Atlantic, we're expecting to be slightly above average as far as sea surface temperature. So obviously that's a very large swath of the Atlantic. It's really a positive AMO, uh, which is a kind of our Atlantic oscillation uh, as far as the sea surface temperatures. So we are expected the Atlantic to overall be positive as far as temperatures. And yes, this does historically create more hurricane development. Same story with the La Nina. La Ninas are historically known for... Uh, bigger hurricane seasons. So the two of these things combined can create pretty massive hurricane seasons right off the bat. Anybody who knows a lot about hurricanes uh, is probably already concerned about these two ingredients being put together here. Uh, but again, throughout the East Coast, the Gulf, the Caribbean, uh, all of these areas off the coast of South America, and then the main development region as well, we're all slightly above average, at least as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. All right, now let's take a look at our second layer here, and this is our above average, not just slightly, but this is an area where we're actually expected to be probably about moderate to largely above average sea surface temperatures here in this orange area. 
And this uh, also encompasses our entire main development region as well. So this will help you guys kind of get a, a compass of where that's at. Again, kind of Haiti and Dominican Republic and take it eastward all the way to Africa. That's our main development region. And what I mean by that, I've said it a few times, so it's probably confused a few of you. That's where the hurricanes typically begin is they're right off the coast of Africa and then they head westward all the way to the Caribbean and near Haiti and Dominican Republic and either they go up into the east coast area or they head into the Gulf from that point but that's our main development region uh, there. So the Gulf, the Caribbean, all of these areas are going to be moderately above average temperatures, it appears, at least. Uh, now we're about to move on, and we're going to take a look at that wind shear forecast, and that's going to have a lot more to do with the La Nina. So I'm very excited to present that to you guys, uh, because that's also going to be a very big contributing factor to our hurricane season this year. All right, so here it is, and we only have one layer here, and we're looking at below average wind shear uh, as a whole for anywhere from the Gulf to the Caribbean uh, down to near Central America and all the way into our main development region, like I said before. That's just where hurricanes typically start up and then make their, uh, make their journey across the Atlantic, and then they head closer to Central and North America uh, there via the main development region. Uh, but all of these pink areas, we're expecting below average wind shear. And what you might be wondering, like, what does wind shear have to do with hurricanes? Well, wind shear really breaks up hurricanes. So when we see a lot of wind shear, which in El Nino's, we typically see a lot of wind shear in this region. And that's why we have below average hurricane seasons typically in El Nino's. But in La Nina's, we typically see below average wind shear for this region. So what ends up happening is there's not a lot of wind to break up these hurricanes. So it's really up to... Uh, the sea surface temperatures to develop develop them, and we're going to have, again, above average sea surface temperatures for this region. So those two things combined, obviously, is going to create really, really favorable conditions for hurricane development. Uh, speaking of favorable development, let's move on to our development forecast. And really what this is, is are we going to have above average or below average hurricane development or activity in these regions. So our first layer here is our slightly above average development region, and that's going to be for the Gulf and the East Coast. Uh, and really the only reason it's a slightly above average development is because it's kind of less certain at this point. It's very early on, and I will be updating this, but this is our slightly above average region just because of the fact that wind shear doesn't play as much of a factor for this region. Uh, and really, it's all going to be about the sea surface temperatures, which is a little bit more uncertain for this area. We are more certain that the main development region is going to be above average as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. Now, we're about to move on, and we're going to show you guys our second layer here where we're expecting largely above average development. And then we're going to move on to our overall hurricane season forecast for 2020. All right, and here's our above average area. Again, it's just not slightly. We're above average in this region. We're a lot more confident that this region will be above average. So think for areas south of Cuba, south of Haiti and Dominican Republic, uh, we're going to have above average development there. And also throughout the entire main development region. Again, I know I keep saying it, and I hope that I'm doing a good job of explaining to you guys what it is. They will develop there off the coast of Africa and then head westward all the way to near Haiti and Dominican Republic. They'll leave, either go north of there or south of there. If they go south of there, likely they will make their way towards the Gulf of Mexico. If they go north of there, they could cross over Florida, but another likely path would be up either offshore of the East Coast or impacting the East Coast. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. But this is an area where we're expecting below average wind shear and above average sea surface temperatures. Those two things combined make me very, very confident that we will see above average development within this region. All right, now let's move on to our overall hurricane season forecast here for 2020. Again, I might be updating this. I might not be. It just depends if I still agree with this 100% wholeheartedly by the time we're making our way towards like June, or if I feel like there needs to be some changes, I'll go ahead and update this. So that's really what it depends on. But we're going to make our way uh, first talking about the main development region, very favorable conditions. I talked about that on the last slide. Uh, and really, we're just expecting above average sea surface temperatures, below average shear. This area is going to have pretty much hurricanes that are freely developing as much as they want to. The only thing that can really hinder the hurricane development is the Saharan dust. And that's really not something we can, we can forecast this far out. So it's really just going to depend on that. The temperatures will be warm enough and there won't be enough shear likely to break up the hurricanes. So... 
Uh, yeah, looking like a lot of development for that region. Now in our orange area there, uh, for areas offshore of uh, Mexico, also areas near Jamaica and Cuba, that's where we're expecting warmer than normal sea surface temperatures, which could lead to above average development as well. Our pink area up there for the East Coast and the Caribbean, that's our wild card area. This one can really go either way. It just depends if a lot of hurricanes, again, make their way north of Haiti and Dominican Republic or if they make their way towards the Gulf more often. So that's our wild card area. Um, we don't really get homegrown systems indicating we don't get storms that start out in this pink region. So it really depends on the areas where they develop uh, either to the south or to the west of, or to the east of this region. Now, for the Gulf of Mexico, the United States there near the Gulf of Mexico, so Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, and Florida there, that's where we have our best chance for landfalling hurricanes and tropical storms there. Um, I'm expecting that this is an area that we could see multiple tropical storms and or hurricanes developing and then making landfall within this region this year. Now, for the comment of the day yesterday, I asked you guys, what is the greatest American sport? And for weather said, the greatest American sport is NFL. And I can't agree anymore. I think that it's so classic to just be sitting in the living room on a Sunday night or a Thursday night watching your favorite NFL team play football, even on Thanksgiving. Uh, it's just a great, great American tradition. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.